All right, traders, welcome to an educational video by Tribeca Trade Group, and my name is Christian from Hertz. So um, in today's educational video, what we're going to be going through is what the market webs indicator is, which uses a very important concept, volume at price. Before we get into that, please read the full risk disclaimer right here. Um, everything that we're going through in this video is for information purposes only, not giving out any advice or recommendations. And that's and as said, this is an educational video. So first of all, um, I wanted to give you a little bit of background, right? And if you want to learn about some of the definitions, you're going to hear me talk about the value area or bottom of value, top of value virgin point of controls. If these things are foreign to you, what you could do is go to my Twitter page and go to the pinned tweet. And um, there is a link that you can go to. Um, you can click on this and it will take you to uh, right here. And it will tell you what the market web's technical trading system explanation is. So it's a, it's a technical system uh, based on market profile theories using volume, time, and price to, to determine a technical roadmap out, outlining significant support resistance across. You could use it for any, anything. You could use it for equities, ETFs, futures, right? And so on and so forth. So that's the, um, that's the definition. But if you're new to this concept, right, of course, a lot of people, uh, a lot of traders, when they're looking at a chart, they look at, of course, price, which is the most important thing for me. And they also have volume on the bottom of the chart. Now, with what um, looking at volume at price does, right, is basically brings up the volume profile, right? So that's the shaded area that basically tells you um, how much volume is occurring, not necessarily at time, but at price levels, right? And that becomes more significant um, in regards to what levels are um, really become important for traders, right? And volume will tell you where, you know, where that those important levels um, are basic basically become. Now, what we found is that, um, and uh, when I say we, this is uh, my colleague, Webb Begol. Um, he's on Twitter. Um, you can um, follow him there as well. But he's developed the market webs indicator. Um, we're now roughly going on nine years ago. So he certainly put his time and effort um, into making this indicator. And we've we have together, you know, jointly um, up been updating this um, for years now, right? We're always, you know, looking to make modifications um, because this, you know, we are traders and what we try to do is make this as useful as possible for traders. So um, the last time that we've updated this um, is roughly about a year ago. And um, I'll walk you through a little bit of some of the trading applications that we can use. Now, a couple of things that you hear about nowadays, which you know has become a, a little bit more um, popular over the last couple of years, which is great, right? People are using things like anchored VWAP, right? Which also looks at volume at price. Now, I will tell you um, what's important about when you're doing it, when you're looking at the technical is we don't want to be manipulating anything, right? We don't want to be saying, hey, we're going to, you know, anchor a level here or start a period here or there, right? We don't want to be messing with any of that. We want to be making objective decisions, right? And not have to mess around with, you know, labeling or putting, um, you know, an indicator at these prices. So, um, and that goes, so that's not only with um, anchored VWAP, because again, I don't want to be have to anchoring a price to anything, right? All of what we've put together for you is set, right? And it's built on multiple timeframes so that um, the trader doesn't get involved with this. Again, we want to take that out of the trader's hands, right? We don't want to make it subjective, okay? So um, that's very important. And that also goes with trend lines, right? You see a lot of traders, technical traders, they'll put a trend line any, anywhere they want. There's um, there's a fellow, I believe is, is um, uh, Carter Worth, right? Who mentions that you could, you could draw a trend line anywhere you want. Right. Or he says something to that effect. I agree. We don't want any of that responsibility to basically say, hey, we can we can draw this trend line here. We could draw it there. Right. You can make sense. You could try to make sense of it any place. We don't want to be messing with any technical indica indicators, um, uh, anchor VWAPs. Uh, trend lines, right? We want our indicators defined for us and they're set with logic and they're set with statistics, right? 
Now it's our job as traders to make decisions based off of that. But when you're messing around with too many things, right, there's too many variables that you're dealing with. Okay, so that's important. And I think, you know, that's why what we've come up with, um, specifically what Web Begol has come up with, uh, uh, I think is, um, you know, the best thing to use in terms of using volume at price. And now I'm going to go through with you why volume at price in some examples is really important. So what we're looking at here is an S&P chart. All right now i do have um moving averages on my charts too because i know that a lot of people look at the 50-day moving average and make decisions based on that so again i'm not tinkering with any of you know moving averages i've got the 200 for for long term the 50 which is kind of a medium term uh moving average and then i've got some short terms uh moving averages on my charts as well right i'll get to that in a second all right, but what we're looking at here is prices trying to hang on to the bottom of value. Why is this important? Because this this um, this value area is based on all of last month's price activity. So yes, it becomes significant. And I'm not going to go through all the um, statistics on where we come up with top of value, bottom of value, but we've tested this over some time, right? And notice that it is doing a good job at telling us where breakouts are occurring, where support is occurring. Now, every time we get to one of these levels, right? It is a battle with buyers and sellers. Who's going to win out? Right now, we know that this is a significant level. And for now, buyers are trying to support this. But sellers could overwhelm uh, the buyers. And we could actually see a break. And we know where that would occur, right? Precisely, 44.8875. If we break below that, the next thing that I would be looking at is possibly a move down to this 44.0925. That's a, that's a red line on my chart. It's called the virgin point of control. What is a virgin point of control really quickly? It is where there was a ton of uh, volume previously where buyers or seller, where price is not revisited, right? So... Um, here's where this um, point of control stems from, right? And it stems from this uh, market profile. And notice that price um, has not revisited this level yet. And if we start moving moving closer to this, it will act as a magnet because that's where a lot of buyers and sellers have previously met up before. All right. So that's what we're dealing with. I wanted to show um, just what this looks like because on the uh, for the um, for the S and P futures because I use this a lot for the indices. But let's talk about some single names and ones that were in the news last week. Right. One of the ones that was in the uh, a name that was in the news last week was Penn National Gaming. Take a look at the the you know this was driven by a news story. Right. So of course, right. Big gap up. It was a positive news story for Penn National Gaming. But look at where it stalled out at. Right. It literally rallied up to a level where a, 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 a amount of buyers and sellers previously met up at, but has not been revisited. Right. So price rallied up to here. Right. And that's overhead supply in this particular case. Right. And the sellers took advantage by saying by selling here. Right. And maybe there's more sellers that live there because look at their rejection. So this is known as a VPOC rejection. Right now, let's let's look at the other name that was in the news um, along with this last week. Right, Disney. Disney also, you know, has been in a name that's been in a downtrend for a while. But as we always talk about, uh, that names and downtrends can see bounces, but trend reversals are a lot more difficult. Right, and where this virgin point of control was, right, was the first step at a bounce. Right, for now, got rejected. Right, and again, it kind of hung in there for a day. You'll see this from time to time. Right, but look at the look at the next day. Right. So it was an exciting stock for about a day. Um, now, I would say I would still keep an eye on this name because it didn't break back into the value area. So um, it may have more to it to go, provided that it can stay above 88.93. So you see how we're going through our decision process here, right? We had a nice move up. It stalled at the virgin point of control, but it may still have some juice into it as long as it stays above 88.93. If it breaks back into this value area, right, then, then the play and the momentum is basically over in this name. All right, let me go through a couple other names that I was watching last week, right? And we're in a, in a time period, um, August, where it's a little bit more of a difficult trading um, time, right? Um, atmosphere right now. So Nike is one of, is there were some of the athletic names started to move last week. However, um, and again, this is why the closing print is also so important in trading. But look at the move um, that started intraday, breaking out of this range. So I like this setup, right? 
um, when you have something that's consolidating like this, we like to look for breaks out of the consolidation. And of course, we want to see a close above the consolidation. Well, this happened intraday, but notice where it closed, right back at the top of value. So the signal, the trading signal is gone. If it were to close above the value area, then I would say I would most likely establish a long position, right? Using the stop at 110 top of value, right? Another name in this space, Lulu, right? Very similar situation. And again, this is what makes August tricky. You're going to see a lot of false breakouts, but the value areas are telling you intraday this started to move, but it could not break out of its range. For now, the market wants to keep a lot of names in you know, in their range right now. So um, no break above the value area, no closing bar above the value area. For now, um, what I'm doing is I'm putting an alert at 387.76, just above this. And that's where I'll begin to kind of watch for it and look for a close out of the value area. Again, this is an attractive looking chart, but it may not be ready yet. And with the market webs, um, you basically have um, a roadmap to tell you, hey, if it closes above here, now it's on to you know, possibly doing something different, which is breaking out of a range. Now, what's also nice about this is you could look at uh, many stocks on multiple timeframes. Everything I've showed you so far is looking at the daily chart. But when we look at the longer term chart, for example, IWM is an interesting one, right? IWM, the small cap ETF, Right? And this is something, if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you know that we've talked about quite a bit, but notice where this thing stalled. And by the way, the value area for uh, when we look at this on the weekly chart is the value area for the whole year. So this value area, top of value, bottom of value, was defined by all of the 2022 price and uh, price and volume. And again, the time is important. That's the other part of the concept, right? Volume, price, and time. So this is the value area for the year. It's not going to change. Notice how in the beginning of the year, all the way back in January, the top of value was very valid and price got rejected there. The second attempt here is rejected again. So really at this point, if you're looking at the small caps, the IWM ETF, I would not really be paying attention to this um, unless it breaks 195.87. Right. All of this is is a range. Now, it could get more you know, um, important when it if it does touch the bottom of value. Right. And that could be a possible uh, support um, area where um, things could basically start to rally from. And that did that, you know, back all the way back in March. Right. It had a nice test very close to the bottom of value. And since then, it made some gains from there. But it's not a breakout, and it's not a breakout until it breaks out above um, top of value 195.87. All right, um, a couple, of a couple other names um, from last week that I was watching. Right, Google was an interesting one. Now here's Google, and and here's how I kind of do this exercise. Number one, it did make it above the valuary for the year. Right, 125.95 is your support. Notice the first time that it tried to do this, it was rejected, but the second time in earnings was the charm. If we go to our daily chart, what are we seeing here? We're also just above the value area. Notice how this got rejected um, at the last virgin point of control takeout, similar to this one back in here too. It spent some time consolidating, managed to break higher on earnings, but those overhead suppliers um, beat out the the new buyers and this is right now in some consolidation period but is holding above the breakout level of 126 73. So what we want to see next, and you can use the one hour chart, you will get a value area for each respective week. And it becomes significant when price can break out of its value area for the week. So this value area, last week's value area, was based on the previous week's volume profile. Notice what happened here, right? There was a couple of times where this tried to break 131.43, but it failed, right? And you knew exactly where, right? So how this can kind of come into play for you is if if you're looking for a long in here, you know where to take some profits right at that top of value. And then you can kind of wait to see if it can break that. But ultimately, you could see that it's had some difficulty and it's just not ready to do it. And again, that may have a lot to do with the time period that we're in, which is August.
All right, and the final stock that we're going to look at is Caterpillar. Now, Caterpillar um, had this really nice breakout of the value area on earnings. So I mentioned I would come back to the moving averages. How do they help me a little bit? Well, the five period moving average, notice how price is staying above. So yes, it's nice to use in conjunction with other indicators, right? And for me, I use the moving averages, especially when we're trending above the value area and we're in a breakout area, which is what we are right now in Caterpillar, right? So staying above the five period moving average, a real clean break out of the value area, and this stock is trending. Really nice when a stock does that. Right now, what happened last week in Caterpillar? Right, this was a name that was on our watch list because it was a strong earnings name. This name started right at the bottom of the value area. Notice how it's making decisions very easy for you. Why is it making decisions very easy for you? Because you're not tinkering with um, setting some anchored level, right? Or putting or trying to figure out where you should draw a trend line, which again is completely arbitrary, right? And subject to what the user's preferences are, right? So here um, is we started right at the bottom of value. So you have a decision here. Either price is going to start to get rejected here by value and start to um, uh, give back more of the gains, or it's going to hold on here. Right. And it actually held here and rallied. Now, notice it didn't rally too far. Right. Um, but and it did come back on a retest. Right. The overall market was kind of weak last week. So it came back and retested, right? But notice it did not break down. That's pretty good, I would say, considering the market that we had last week. And now you have a possibility of a double bottom setting in here. Now, no, we don't know it's a double bottom until we start to kind of make, make our way above here. But um, this is a name that did pretty well last week, um, considering, and you had a trading decision that if you wanted to, you could go long versus a stop just below the bottom of the value area. So that's a little bit about uh, how we use the market webs, why I think that they are the best tool to have um, if you're looking at volume at price, which I believe is very useful in your trading, you know, whether you use it for, you know, looking at, uh, using uh, just straight up indices or futures or ETFs or single stocks. I believe it's the best tool out there for using volume at price. Now, where can you get this tool? Well, this is think or swim, right? We do not sell this to the public right now. We only sell it to TTG members, right? Um, once you become a member, you know, we, I will give you the pricing for that if it, that's something. But I would say, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this video today is because we actually have something in the works to bring it to a new platform. So um, stay tuned. Um, we're going to have this for another platform. Again, it's available for a one-time sale, but you have to be a Tribeca Trade Group member. Um, we might change those rules a little bit. Uh, once we have it on the um, the new platform. So you'll hear from me again about um, that new platform and, um, and the pricing and how that's going to work. So thanks for watching today's video. Um, if you like this uh, analysis, um, please give it a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Have a great day, everybody.